Okay guys, in the last video, we retrieved the routing parameter using the snapshot approach. But this approach has a limitation. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate what that limitation is and also how to overcome that limitation. Now in our application, we always navigate from the department list component to the department detail component. So let's improve this and add a previous and next button inside our department detail component so that we can go back and forth between the different departments. So let's implement the functionality in our code. So over here in department detail component, underneath this H3 tag, I'm going to add two links. So anchor tag. And the first anchor tag is going to say previous. The next one is going to say next. Now anytime I click on previous, I need to move to the previous department and anytime I click on next, I need to go to the next department. So what we need to do is listen to this click event. So we are going to assign a handler and I'm going to name it as go previous. And similarly for next button, I'm going to listen to click event and I'm going to assign a handler go next. So now before I define these functions, if you remember, whenever we navigate from code, we need to use this router service. So this dot router dot navigate, and then we pass in the link parameters array. So let's go ahead and do the same. First thing we need to do is import the router service from angular slash router, and then inject it as a dependency in the constructor. So private router of type router. So now I can define go previous and go next. So go previous is the method. Now, what we need to do here is retrieve the previous ID and then navigate to it. So I'm gonna do let ID, I'm gonna call this previous ID. So let previous ID is equal to, if you remember, we have this dot department ID, which we're displaying in the view, and that is going to contain the current ID. So if I subtract one from it, I'm gonna get the previous ID. So let previous ID is department ID minus one. And then I'm gonna go back here and then just copy this code. This dot router dot navigate to departments. So let me just move this back. And instead of passing department ID, we are going to pass in the previous ID. Now the same thing I'm gonna do with go next method. So I'm going to say instead of go previous, go next. And instead of previous ID, we have a next ID. And instead of decrementing, we are going to increment it. And we're going to pass this next ID as the parameter. So let's save this and let's test if our application works. So I'm going to go back here. Our application just reloaded. If I click on Angular, it says you selected with ID equals one and the same is reflected in the URL. If I click on node, ID equals two and department or in the URL, it says two. But now let me click on this next button. All right, I did click on this button if you did not hear my mouse click. But as you see, our application is not working as expected. So let me analyze the code and explain to you why it doesn't work. So let's start with the button click. Now when we click next, the ID is incremented and then we call router.navigate and we pass in the new ID. So let's, let's check if this part of the code is working. So if you have a look at the URL, we did navigate to the next department, but our view logic is not working, which means the ng on init, on init method is not working. And let me explain why. Now Angular is pretty smart. Angular is going to create this department detail component only if you navigate from some other component to the department detail component, or in our case, from department list to department detail. But Angular is not going to recreate the same component if you're navigating back to itself, or in our case, from department detail back to department detail. So in the first case, ng on init is going to get called because the component is created. But when we navigate from department detail to itself, 
the component is just going to be reused. It is not going to be recreated and hence ng on init method is not going to get called again. So since we have this router snapshot in ng on init, this doesn't get called at all. So this is the limitation of the snapshot approach. When we are navigating from a component back to itself and we need to retrieve this ID or the parameter, then it is going to be a limitation. Now, what is the solution to this? The answer is the params variable. Now, let me just comment the ng on init that we have already coded so that you can compare and contrast. And let's implement a new ng on init. Now, any time we need to retrieve the parameter, we are going to use the params observable. So over here, I'm going to say this dot route dot params. Now this params, if you see here, is going to return an observable. So an observable only sends us data when we subscribe to it. So dot subscribe. And the subscribe method is going to take in an arrow function. So the parameter is going to be params. And let's strong type this to be of type params. So apart from router, let's also import params. Now this is going to have the fat arrow syntax and then the body of the function. Now, so over here, I'm going to say let id is equal to parse int so that we can convert from string to an integer params of id. And I'm just going to re-explain what this does but let me first complete the code. So this dot department ID is equal to ID. So this params observable is actually capable of detecting any change to the route parameter. And even when we navigate back to the same component, it can detect the change. So even though ng on init is called only once, it is fine because this params observable can handle the change. So basically the route service gives us access to all the parameters and that is going to be returned as a params observable. And we are going to subscribe to it. When we subscribe, we get all the parameters. And out of all the parameters, we just need the ID parameter. We convert it into an integer and then assign it to the department ID that we display in our view. So let me save this and now let's test our application. So I'm going to go to departments. I click on angular. I get one. I click next. You see the URL is two and so is the view. I click on next three and three. I go previous two and two. So that is how the params observable approach is going to overcome the limitation when you navigate to a component itself. So just to quickly quickly summarize what we did, we added a previous and next button within the detail component. So we navigate back to it, but the parameter is going to change every time. Now the snapshot approach cannot handle this. So we need the params observable approach. So using the route or activated route service, which we refer to as route in here, we use the params observable, we subscribe to it, we get hold of all the params, but then we just filter out the ID param and then we assign it to department ID. So anytime you navigate from one component to a different component, you can use the snapshot approach, it's fine. But if you're navigating back to the same component and, and still passing route parameters, then make sure you use the params observable approach. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.